So uh, I'm just about to start uh, drawing the uh, the lovely bear. He is uh, quite an unusual colour. He's a working cocker spaniel. Um, and you can see uh, he's got very, very soft um, fur. You can tell he's got soft fur just, just by looking at it. Um, not so much curly the ears, uh, but the, there are some sort of like lovely um, ringlety bits going on here. Um, but what's really quite unusual is he's quite, he's a bit roany coloured, um, as in there's the sort of flecks here. You can see flecks of, of the of the orangey colour going through with this cream, um, which obviously if you're creating a portrait of, of a, of a pet you really need to capture all of these little um, you know fur details um, so uh, what I do when I when I start a, a piece um, I'll have a I'll have a really good look at the reference photograph uh, this is a good reference photograph it's well detailed the color is good um, it's a nice pose I don't need to do anything to it I don't need to change the contrast I don't need to change any of the the lighting I don't need to put a filter or anything on it sometimes you get um, images that are really very dark especially sort of in this area here where you can't see any detail um, this area is okay <clears throat> but sometimes you can't see the detail so just taking it into your phone or your iPads editing um, uh, you know on, on the phone and edit it you can use the functions there just to either lighten it or you can put one of the filters on from your phone you don't have to pay for anything um, and lighten it and you can actually then see the detail that is in the shadows um, for me when I uh, create the shadows I like to create the fur inside the shadow and then darken it so there is actually detail in there uh, if you look carefully it's not just a, a big black or, or very dark blob <coughs> if you like um, so color wise um, I'd be looking at so I, I work in polychromos Faber-Castell Faber polychromos the Caran d'Ache Pablos and luminance <coughs> now luminance have got some fabulous um, shade colors so shades of burnt sienna shades of the the ochres uh, shades of the uh, the French greys uh, really really beautiful colors um, and I would probably look at maybe the 5 10 20 percent um, shades of, of the yellow ochres maybe for this um, area it's quite light it's not white at all it's quite creamy <coughs> and the um, the titanium buff in the luminance as well is, is a great color it's quite a pinky cream which I think would be really nice here um, combined with probably terracotta um, which is a quite a, an orangey color um, probably sanguine which is one of my favorite colors uh, you know and a, and a mixture of, of all of those colors layer over layer <coughs> is going to give you a really really um, good depth uh, you know rather than just going in with like a white or a cream and adding that in uh, because you're not going to get the depth of the fur and you're not going to get the feel of it around this area here there's some warm greys which you would lay over the top of not big blobs of it but you know lay into the layering um, and then you've got around here you've got some really quite nice bright orangey bits um, you know which I probably use like a cadmium orange uh, the terracotta again but not just on their own you know really nicely layering them over each other um, the ivory in the polychromas is a really really good uh, light cream color um, so I would use that to kind of pick out some of these creams but I'd also use pinks um, so lots of cinnamon in this area here I can see is quite pink it's orangey but it's it's the cinnamon is, is sort of like an, an orangey pink if you like so that combined with the terracotta with the sanguine layered over the top of each other and maybe even in this area here um, just a, a very 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 light glaze of the of the orange glaze which is a amazing color um, and a really really light layer of that just will will lift it um, and I don't know it'll just give it something um, and then you've got these darker areas here now what you have to be careful is uh, when you're drawing with um, yellows oranges and then you want to add some shadow if you chose an orange like the terracotta like the cadmium orange uh, and then you wanted to darken it and you put black over the top which you know th th there's nothing wrong with using black um, but if you put black over the top of the the, the terracotta this area here you're going to get a green tinge um, you can see on this photograph anyway that the um, 
there is a green tinge on it because it, he's he's standing in a field and you can see the background is reflected in his chin um, and that is something I've got to be very careful of just around this area here um, in the photograph it looks great because it's all in context with the background once I isolate this photograph from the background um, having that green spot on his chin it's gonna look really weird so that's something I've got to really take into account when um, you know when I start drawing him um, and I need to remove this green area and and I'll probably look at some other photographs of him I might even tweak this in Photoshop and get rid of this green hue um, but it's for me it's not about um, copying like for like with the with the photograph um, I have to take into account what it's going to look like when it's removed from the background and having the background colour reflected in, in his fur is really important that I remove that um, particularly in this one because otherwise it's going to stand out like a sore thumb um, so back to this shadow area uh, I would look at um, if I was going to put some orange in there I'd look at putting sanguine in the polychroma sanguine um, it's quite a pinky orange um, but if you use it with black over the top or, or the, the dark indigo over the top, you don't get the green tinge. Um, I, I have, I'm not a, a scientist or anything like that. I, I don't know why, but you, you, when you use pencils so much, you get to know what, what colours work with others and what happens if you overlay one over the top of the other. <clears throat> with Sanguine, if you're going to be using oranges and you want to put some dark blue in or some black in, it's, it's brilliant because you don't get that green tinge. The other thing that you could do, because this is quite a warm um, piece, it's quite a warm photo, um, you can use the dark reds. Uh, so dark red over, over an orange, you know, you, you're, you're not going to get the greeny tinge and you're going to get this lovely darkness. The other thing as well is if, if you lay, um, say, a terracotta, then say a caput mortem violet, which is a very, very dark um, violety red, and then you put black over the top, you're not going to get the green tinge. And, you know, it's about learning how to uh, how to layer your colours and get them in the right order so that you can use the, the, the colours you want to use, but you don't get those unexpected results. Um, so that's that's how I would uh, what I would put in, in these darker areas. Um, the light areas down here, um, you've got some lovely sandy colours and I, and I know there aren't that many great uh, sandy browns in the polychromos range, but in the luminance range, there are some fabulous lighter colours. Um, we're looking at uh, some pinky, pinky oranges here. So you may be putting, um, you know, uh, some, some burnt ochre, maybe a little bit of light ochre, especially light ochre in these ears bits here that are, that are sort of quite yellowy. They might, when you put the, when you put the colour in, it might be too bright um, but then you can add a layer in that's just going to knock that back a little bit um, but what you're going to get by adding the brightness and then knocking it back you're still going to get the depth rather than trying to choose a pencil that's exactly the same color as the fur um, you know you've got little bits of color coming through which which it really really does add to um, add to the piece and then you've got some really really dark areas in here and again <clears throat> i'd be looking at layering so there's there's a lot of um terracotta in here uh not just on its own but it overlaid with the pinks with the ivories um i'd probably put some light yellow ochre something like that in there um, and then overlay it with the uh, caput mortem violet um, which is the darkest red and then probably put the dark um dark ivory in there as well uh, dark indigo in there sorry dark ivory dark indigo in there as well uh, you know just to give it a really really rich color and then you can even go in with a really sharp black and just really blacken up those the, the really really dark areas in there if if you went in with just black <clears throat> into these areas and you just put black in where the darkest bits were they wouldn't be rich enough um, they wouldn't be dark enough um, I used to work in the printing world and uh, in the printing world you work with cyan, magenta, yellow and black um, and uh, you, if you wanted a really really rich black <clears throat> you wouldn't just have the black plate you would either have all the, the plates together on top of each other so you've got cyan, magenta, yellow, black you've got them all over the top um, or you put a, a black film in with either a 20%, 30%, 40% cyan underneath it, which makes a much, much richer black. 
Um, and it's really, really important, I think, with coloured pencils to understand just using black on its own, you're not going to get the depth, you're not going to get the richness. Um, and adding different colours underneath. So these eyebrows here, really black. Let's see if I can... Starting to go a bit blur pixelated there, but you can see there's there's some there's some orangey colours in here. Now, if you used a burnt sienna in here, um, so you put a layer of burnt sienna, and then you added a layer of black, you're going to get a really rich black, but you're going to get some of that lovely um, reddy browny uh, warmth shining through the black, even though it is going to look black. You're still going to get, and then you can just sort of overlay it slightly and then you're going to get this lovely little tingy bit at the top of the eye but the um the eyelid here um and the same here and then you know adding some quite bright orange you can add um you know you can always knock it back slightly uh, but that's how that's how i do my 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 blacks you know i always use something underneath it uh, for the nose it's it's a it's a brown nose there's also quite a bit of blue in this top bit here uh, and blues in the in the highlight shiny bits here. Um, I'd look at using, you know, there's the, there's the walnut browns. Uh, there's some lovely browns within the, uh, the luminance range. Um, <clears throat> but I'd also probably use a bit of the, um, the Caput Morton Violet in here, um, overlaid with the brown. Uh, probably some warm greys in this area here to pull out these highlighty bits over the top of the initial layers uh, and then uh, I'd, I'd probably I'd probably look at using sort of like the dark indigo as well um, which is great for using with brown um, you have to be careful which browns you use it with. If you use the dark indigo over the top of something like burnt sienna, you're going to get the greeny tinge again. But if you use it over the uh, the walnut brown, which is quite a cool brown, um, you know you're not going to get that that greeny tinge. Um, and the, the the dark indigo is going to really enhance the brown. It's not going to make it look blue, but it's just going to enhance it and make it look deeper. And and uh, you know, you, and that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a, a you know the the depth in your piece um, and, and the realness um, and the same <clears throat> the same with the lips here I probably use quite a bit of I do some red in here um, only a touch and then I probably overlay it with with like a walnut brown or um, you know sort of and I put some black in here as well but again I'd use uh, layers of other colors um, you know to, to get that richness of the black um, and that's that's kind of it really uh, lots of lots of oranges lots of red India red would be really nice in here just looking at this bit here so if I put um, a layer of sanguine in here first of all and probably some ivory in here as well just to lift those uh, those little touches of highlight um, and then if I went in with an Indian red polychromous Indian red the, the red over the top of the sanguine you're gonna get an even richer orange um which sounds a bit bizarre but you're gonna get these really lovely rich bits in here um and you don't need a lot and you don't need over the over the whole amount you know over all of the hair but just in those little bits it's really going to make a difference with your fur detail uh, and that's what's going to really help it um the contrast of the fur you know making the fur look real adding all of these little shadowy bits and everything that's that's really what's going to make it um, stand out uh, the creams and the yellows in the ear uh, these dark bits here there isn't really any black in here I'm not seeing really really black blacks in here uh, and seeing some pinky bits here uh, these bits here I'm seeing really quite a dark dark orange so that's what I'd look to be putting in there and then you know you, you work on it you have a look what it looks like um, you, you add more layers if you need to do the layering is very very soft pressure when you first start the paper I use is pastel maps Claire Fontaine uh, pastel map and the, the the initial layers you put down when you first start using pastel map you put the initial layer down and you're like oh my god how on earth am I going to do anything with this paper because it just looks like a child has just run a crayon across a, a you know a piece of paper you can see all of the teeth tooth through it there's and it's just it seems an impossible task 
<clears throat> but the more you layer over the top of, and not just, as I was explaining before, not just the same colour over and over again, but you put your different colours in, you can choose your colours. You know, you may look at this dog and go, well, I don't see what you're seeing. That's fine. You know, I think everybody sees things in a, in a slightly different light. You choose what colours you feel you can see. And the more you do, the, the, the more your eye starts to pick out colours in, in everything. You know, you'd be going for a walk and you go, oh, you know, there's a little bit of, um, you know, I don't know, dark indigo there, a bit, oh, you know. And, and uh, that, that's what happens. You start to pick out colours, especially if, if you're doing an awful lot of animals. You start to pick out the colours in the fur. Um, so that that that's that's the thing with pastel mat. It's the layering. Um, you and and what you'll find is once you uh, become a fay with your pencils and how they work, you'll find that um, some pencils will go down on the pastel mat and it, it it'll be rough. It'll look really rough. You then put another color over the top of it and it still looks rough. But you'll find that some pencils blend beautifully even on the second layer. You know, so you'll add a dark indigo, um, you know, you, you put a patch of dark indigo down. You then go over that with a cold grey too. Straight away it will blend. It, it, it will blend that uh, dark indigo. Yes, it will make it lighter, but straight away you start to get a smoother feel on your paper, even in that second layer. If you go dark indigo and then you go uh, black over the top, it's going to be rough you're not going to get the smoothness and you would need to put an awful lot of layers in to get the smoothness which is why many artists go uh, dark light dark light dark light in their layering um, because it just helps to blend those in between layers and eventually you get so many layers that the tooth starts to disappear but you can still add the detail in um, you know and that the piece doesn't become shiny and, and glossy but you start to get a much smoother feel. Um, you might not want that smooth feel. You might want lovely texture here. You might want lovely texture here. And you can use your paper to an advantage. Um, you know, to get this texture here, you're not going to need a huge amount of layers. In the eye, where it's, you know, you want it to look glassy, you want it to look shiny, you're going to have to put quite a few layers in. And you probably will have to use quite a bit of pressure on the end uh, layer and when I say quite a bit of pressure I don't mean digging really hard into the paper I mean slightly less than indenting your skin on your hand with your pencil you know but the but that's that's what's brilliant about the, the pastel mat is that you can get really really shiny uh, pieces you know if you're doing leather or if you're doing dog's eyes um, and you can use the paper to your advantage to get those lovely textured bits like these tufty bits here these tufty bits here I'll put in a really, really tiny amount of pencil and then I'll go in with like a, a pan pastel soft tool or a, a makeup sponge and I'll just, you know, dab over it and it'll literally just smudge the paper on the, um, uh, smudge the pencil on the paper and you've got the little tufty bit. So there's one layer. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to put in masses and masses amount of layers absolutely everywhere. Uh, you know, it, it's just about working with your pencils, finding out how they work, uh, you know, and using the gorgeous colours, um, you know, to an advantage. And, and don't just pick out an orange and go with that. You know, there's little bits of brown in here, there's little bits of red in here, there's little bits of pink in here. That's what's going to make your, um, you know, your drawings look really, really real. Um, so I, I hope that's been helpful. <laughs> Please let me know if it hasn't been helpful. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to do some more around colour in different animals, you know, um, bay horses, black dogs, that type of thing. Um, you know, and, and, and also remember that everybody works differently. There's no right, there's no wrong. Uh, um, you know, I work how I work because that's that's how I've I've worked out how I work the best. Um, you know, there's there's you know copying a photograph. We have to copy photographs if you're a if you're a portrait artist. Um, you know, you you have to copy a photograph. You can't get away from that. Um, you know, but what you can do is you can you can start to understand what your uh, picture is going to look like if you take the background out. If you leave the background in, great. If I was leaving the green around this, this Cocker Spaniel, uh, then I would leave that green tinge in his chin because it would work beautifully. Um, 
but I'm not. I'm taking the background out. He's going on a, a dark grey background um, and the green will just look a bit strange. Um, so um, please do let me know what you think. Um, really happy to do some more of these because they, they don't take long to do. Uh, and, um, and thank you for watching.